Good morning, everyone. Good mo On this gorgeous day, I'm wearing my Bring Your Own Sunshine shirt. Is it a hot water now? Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, because I know, I know that we have uh, a lot of sunshine in our hearts, and we have uh, warm memories of the Benichek family and what they've meant to us. So, this is a day of celebrating that. Uh, and we've got appreciate you uh, putting up with the whole mask thing, uh, and the weather is adding its own glorious uh, aspect to this. So we've got some special things uh, for the Benichick family. Uh, Melissa will tell about one of them. Hi, good morning. I'm Melissa Quevedo. I'm the current um, SPRC chair. Um, and I wanted to tell you about one of the gifts that uh, as a congregation we're creating um, for the Benichick family. So it's over on the right hand side of this table and it is a piece of artwork that says um, love others, value everyone. And then on the back, it's going to be all of our signatures. So if you have a chance before you leave today, we'd love for you to add your signature to that. Um, and we chose to put that on the front of it because um, my understanding is it's a saying that was a part of this church before they came. So the idea is, you know, every pastor that comes to a church, they're bringing their gifts. And then they're also taking from the church gifts that we have to give to them that they can then take with them to their next congregation. Um, so we just wanted to have kind of in essence a, a piece of this church that they can take with them. Um, very good, thank you. Good morning, uh, I'm Denise Evans, in case you don't know me, been around forever. I'm putting together a scrapbook for the family and so if you have any pictures or if you just have uh, a story you want to tell, there are note cards on the table next to the signature page that you can just write a story about them and let them take that with them and remember you guys from them. So thank you. Okay, on with the festivities. Since the Benichick family is so musical, we thought the best place to start would be with Rick and Slim. You answered the call and obeyed God's command. He sent you here and we know you're his hand. Your message from the word touches our very souls. We've seen your faithfulness and we want you to know. Pastor, we thank you. We appreciate all you do. And God sees the sacrifice you made for Jesus Christ. You pray for the lost, and God leads them to the cross. And we know one day you'll hear your father say, My child, well done. My child, well done. Pastor, we thank you. We appreciate all you do. And God sees the sacrifice you made for Jesus Christ. You pray for the lost, and God leads them to the cross. And we know one day you'll hear your father say, My child will die. My child will die.
Okay, uh, now we're gonna have, Jane's gonna come up and share something with us. So Sandra Lawson could not be here today, so I am reading a letter that she has written to you. Dear Mike, the time has come for you to move to a new congregation. Such is the way of the appointment system at UMC. We all know it, even if we don't like it. Your reign at OCUMC has been memorable. I remember those first few years working with you as finance chair. You brought us out of a deficit to a solid budget. You even paid off the mortgage. We even paid off the mortgage. Tremendous accomplishment on your part. Thank you. Then there have been all the issues we have faced during church council meetings. We motored through them without too much angst. Your leadership was so evident. Thank you. Your sermons and words of wisdom have been rich and thought-provoking. It's been easy to transfer the ideas and the concepts you presented to daily life. Thank you. I must also mention your caring and supportive attitude and actions for the congregation. This momentum of love others, value everyone, extended to others outside of our church family. Thank you. One last thing comes to mind. Your sometimes funny, sometimes lame jokes. <laughs> your humor will live on as we recall certain stories and one-liners. Thank you. I have appreciated working with you and having you as a friend. Godspeed on your new adventure. Peace, Sandra Lawson. And I think all I can say really is ditto. We've enjoyed having you. <laughs> Sheila? Okay, well, Sandy expressed everything so well. Uh, um, I just want to say to Mike and his family that it goes without saying, although everybody has said it, we're going to miss you. And the church in Idaho had better appreciate you. <laughs> um, Mike, you've been our spiritual and and practical leader for eight years now. I remember one of the first things that you encouraged us to do when you came here was to redo the sanctuary space so that it became more like a sanctuary. And I, for one, really appreciate that. And then you gently led us and encouraged us when we debated and finally voted to become a reconciling congregation. You encouraged us and told us that we could pay off that mortgage, and by gum, we did it. And that was to, thanks to your encouragement. You've worked so well with all the committees of this church, and um, we really appreciate it. And I'm going to forget what else I was going to say. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we just really hope that the church, you're going to appreciate you. And I want to offer you a virtual handshake of thank you and best wishes as you're going on to your next assignment. Um, we're really going to miss you. And on behalf of the SPRC and the entire congregation, I'd also like to offer a virtual hug of Christian love to your entire family and to you. We so appreciate all of you, and we're so going to miss all of you, and by golly, that church in Idaho had better appreciate who they're getting. <laughs> Leslie? Susan, 
Susan said I should have my basket, which is, you know, you see, you see me with that a lot, but I don't go very often places without notes because there are a lot of things that I want to say and to be thankful for that I will think of tonight um, <laughs> after, after all of this. But when, when you think of when a new minister arrives, you don't really know what they're going to bring with them. You see a little bit of uh, bio, um, people have met and seen little snippets. You don't know too much about their family or their prior involvement. And when a young, busy family arrived here, we didn't really know what they were going to bring to um, our church as a whole. And sometimes you have in your mind, oh, they're going to be so excited to be here, and they're going to want to jump right in. And we have these expectations of, of, of a new minister and their family coming in and, and what they will do for us. And I hope that we have also done a little bit for you, that, that you're coming away from all of this uh, experience uh, wiser, certainly older. And, um, you know, when you think of when their kids arrived, they were all elementary school age, and that's a busy time for a family. And then you have these expectations of, oh, there's going to be some revitalization and some new things, and it's going to be exciting. And then you come right up against that famous Methodist quote of, uh, oh, well, we've never done it that way before. And you just need to open your heart and jump in. So I am so happy that not just Mike jumped in, but really the whole family came along with that. And whether it was helping out with Wednesday night dinners or the bigger things like um, vacation Bible school or a Christmas pageant, they, they really jumped in to help. And I know that for the kids, sometimes your volunteering is more like voluntold and we so appreciate the uh, moving of tables and all of the little things that you do to make the big things work so one thing quote that I can think of from Mike that he has has said and always meant was um, whatever you need me to do I would say oh what do you want to do for vacation Bible school whatever you need me to do I, I know that that really meant whatever I needed him to do and sometimes the day started out one way and it and ended a different way so Mike's response to me and and to our church is something that I am so thankful for and I hope that when you go off to your new place that people realize uh, how lucky they are that you guys are at a new place in your life and that change is difficult, but I hope that you are welcomed with um, open arms and excitement that comes with having a new uh, church family. So thank you for all that you've done. We're so appreciative of uh, all the little things you, you, the, the big things we remember, uh, but it's really all of those little pieces that help us um, be a strong, wonderful congregation. So thank you. Okay, let's hear from Rick and Slim again. Stephanie, where are you? There you are. Guess what? We have a very special guest here just for you, Stephanie. <clears throat> Your favorite country singer, Willie Nelson, decided to come by. <laughs> Pastors are easy to love, but hard to get home. Just one call to be made and a seed to be sown. Long-winded blessings and old illustrations. Everyone thinks he's a saint. His wife, yes, she loves him. She puts up with him. But that's one thing she knows he's ain't. 
Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be pastors. Don't let them tape sermons and buy them old books. Keep them from pulpits and potlucks and such. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be pastors. Whenever they're home, they tie up the phone, and dinner is always served cold. Pastors like words no one uses in modern day language. They'd rather get out their Bibles and speak from the Greek. Dinner is burning, but he keeps on preaching, then stops to shake every hand. His wife, yes, she loves him, she puts up with him, but that's one thing she knows he's ain't. Voice is terrible, isn't it? Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be. Don't let them take sermons and buy them old books. Keep them from pulpits and potlucks and such. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be. Whenever they're home, they tie up the phone. And dinner is always served cold. Ted, you want to come up and follow that? getting ready to send the Benedicts on their way. Anyway, I do have a few words to say about when the Benedicts first arrived here. My interactions with Mike occurred shortly after he and his family arrived in Oregon City. It took Mike a few months to get used to the Oregon City United Methodist Church way of doing things. We all know about that, right? OCUMC was in deep financial debt. As a member of the Finance Committee, I could see that Mike had a plan and was ready to begin implementing his plan. The congregation was emotionally attached to the back property, but we needed to sell it and return the church to a sound, financially functioning body. Mike has been able, with his flexible leadership style and middle-of-the-road approach, to follow Methodist guidelines and rules to keep the variety of groups in our church working together for the greater good. Our motto of loving others and valuing everyone has always been in the forefront of how decisions were made. Who can disagree with our motto? And then COVID struck. The bishop shut down our in-person worship services. Mike and the worship team design team threw out the old service format and created a newer, better service on Zoom. But we really missed the contact with each other. The content of our worship time has grown and expanded with Mike's input. Seeing places in Oregon City that many of us have never seen before. Going to the Oregon beaches when we needed to feel the serenity and rhythm of God's creation from someone else's eyes and perspective. Having uplifting messages that were related to these wonders and touched us all. Doing the services in a new way. Communion in the park, Christmas Eve, and Easter morning services on the portico. Walking through the worship space and seeing the Christmas story develop and the Easter journey unfold. Mike also became involved in community groups, 
I especially appreciated his involvement in the Rotary Club of Oregon City. He was also involved in the Chamber of Commerce, the Gaffney Lane School Announcement Board, which he did, I think, for his whole tenure here, um, and involving us in monthly Red Cross blood drives. Mike and his family have become a part of the community of Oregon City, and we shall really miss them. We've come a long way under Mike's leadership. We have paid 100% of our apportionments for the first time in forever, and the mortgage is paid off. We pray for Mike's continued success at Meridian UMC. We are not ready to see the Benedict family move on to the next stop God has in mind for them. But who are we to second guess God? Again, blessings to the Benedict family, and may our love and prayers go with you in all you do, now and in the future. Amen. All right, Marv. Hi, I'm up here representing worship design and tech teams, and we're obviously celebrating the last eight years that Reverend Mike and his family have spent with us and wishing them the best as they move on to Idaho. When Mike first arrived here, he didn't know quite what to do with a worship design team, uh, having never heard of one before. But as we have adapted to each other over the years, many good things have come out of our collaborations. I know Mike came to appreciate that many worship-related things were spread out over a team that uh, helped implement them instead of being solely his responsibility, such as the decorations that enhance the worship theme that we build on the side stage. He also used this to help provide ideas for sermons that he then fleshed out along with his own original thinking into the interesting sermons we've all appreciated. Red Mike's proved to be very creative in tying our local history, both of this church and of the area, into his sermons. His ability to dig up things that even those of us who have spent many years in the area, like our whole life, uh, were not aware of, and this greatly enhanced his preaching. He's very adept at uh, researching things and digging up facts about the Methodist movement as a whole which also make his sermons much more relevant. The way that he's dealt with the COVID challenges to worship, and Ted stole a lot of my thunder here, uh, <laughs> with the online services uh, have been great. He, uh, it may not be generally known that he has been doing most of the editing on these. Uh, uh, we did aid him with certain constructive criticisms and collaborations, and uh, he's gotten to be very good at it. Uh, he also uh, came up with the ideas for the stroll through Christmas and the path to Easter that we uh, had in the sanctuary. Uh, it was it was fun. He took gave us the ideas, and and the team uh, took it and ran with it. Uh, Mike's also contributed to a number of things relative to worship that have improved the experience of worship as a whole. Uh, as Ted mentioned, he was instrumental in guiding the rebuilding of the worship stage space, uh, both with his ideas and with his physical labor. You guys remember that creaky aluminum stage we used to have? It's nice and quiet now. Most of the professionally made banners that you see around the church uh, are things that Mike has purchased and he's been hanging most of them as the design team members are getting a little ladder resistant. <laughs> he's also been able to bring several tech items to fruition by finding the funding and, and inspiration. And one of them that you haven't seen yet is we just this last week finished installing a high definition television system. So with any luck and God willing, we will have that working next Sunday and live streaming. Uh, so we hope that Mike will 
remember us fondly as we will him. We'll also greatly miss Stephanie's vocal talents and other musical abilities that she's with us, as well as the helpfulness of the rest of the family. As a good example, Christian is working the camera while I'm up here. And it's also been interesting watching uh, Christian, Gabe, and Samantha turn from little children into young adults. Idaho's lucky to get them, and we wish them the best. Okay, Marion? Going last is quite an experience since everybody spoke about things that I would like to speak about. But I have been the lay speaker, now called lay servant, for almost 20 years. I'm also a member of the worship design team. I served as pulpit backup for both Gary Ross and Jerry Hill before this. And uh, after Gary and Jerry, I was ready for just about anything. So what a pleasant surprise to find out that Mike was a joy to work with. Subbing for Pastor Mike has always been easy. Lots of advance notice, freedom to pick my own topics. And I really appreciate his work style. Organized, dependable, always has a plan. Sometimes it's a Tom Sawyer plan. <laughs> I remembered that right after you got here, I got a call one day when I was painting one of my bedrooms and he said, are you busy this afternoon? I said, no, because I didn't want to paint. He says, we have birds. And then I realized what he was talking about. They, if you don't, maybe you don't remember, we had birds coming and going in the sanctuary. They were making deposits on his organ and piano and all over the place. And so it was Mike's decision that we were going to stop that once and for all. So Zach was on the outside, Mike and I were on the inside, and these birds were dive bombing Zach on the outside, pecking at him. And we had to clean up for the rest of the day on the inside. So that was pretty exciting. I realized that you were, you were okay. I had to, and, but I remembered it. But anyway, he's, he's kind of Tom Sawyer, but he, he's ready to get in there and work, and I really appreciate that. He is the picture of equanimity. Equanimity is your vocabulary word of the day. It means mental calmness, composure, evenness of temper, especially in difficult situations. Makes him a pretty good pastor to be like that. Your picture ought to be right there in the dictionary, right next to it, because you are cool as a cucumber. Not that we've had a lot of opportunity to test that, but <laughs> yeah, not good. But over the last year, I think, I think that would, has tested it a little bit. This being, being in, in an environment where we haven't had any experience, being separated as a congregation, Mike really shined. He, he really showed what it meant to be someone who could, who could deal without getting upset, deal without giving up. I mean, he's been the person who has put together the things that we're doing now. He kept us connected as a congregation, along with the worship design team. And it's, it's been amazing. The weekly videos, and now going into, sort of tiptoeing into worship together and the online video system, it's, it's gonna work out. We're gonna be fine. You won't be here to see it, but, but we'll be good. And we wanna thank Miss Stephanie and all the kids. <sighs> Don't know what we're gonna do without you. Now we have a very, very, very special event Well, the circle is now complete. Here's the official church mortgage. It, ironic, and uh, the circle is complete. I was the chair of trustees when we started this mess, but no, I haven't been trustees for all that long. So thank goodness I probably would have no hair instead of white hair. But it all started for you have not been around here or are new here. This place started with a little scrap of paper rolling around on the floor of a Pepsi delivery truck. That's where we found out the name of the people that owned the Oregon City uh, Drive-In Theater. And so from that 
we're here. And thanks to Mike, we will hear shortly, burn the mortgage. Pastor Mike and his family arrived here on July 1st, 20, uh, 2013. I wasn't going to cry. <laughs> yeah, that was prior to my time here, but I can imagine that he was pleased to arrive in Oregon City and also that he found a church with a few financial woes. Given his creativity, his humor, and experience, he hit the ground running and set lofty goals for all of us. August 2019, he presented the congregation with Help Get the Wallers to Oregon City, a mortgage game. Our church mortgage was 85,000 plus. With the Oregon Trail being 2,170 miles, it was determined that the Waller family could move one mile for every $40 raised. It seemed possible that we could get them here by Christmas of 2020. Thus, our mortgage would be met, and keep in mind this was prior to COVID, thank goodness. With the support of this church, the Wallers made it by March 2020, a full nine months ahead of schedule. By the grace of God, we found that we were debt free. This is just one of the many stories we can tell and memories we can share of Pastor Mike and his family. Our prayer is that the church in Idaho will welcome the family and learn to love them as much as we do. I know they will learn that each Sunday, Pastor Mike will intermingle great stories along with a Bible message to carry them through another week. They will come to realize that Stephanie can sing like an angel and will bring such brightness to the Sunday service, and that Christian, Gabe, and Sam will read scripture, sing when coached, and encourage other teenagers to enjoy the church as much as they do. Our hearts are heavy at this minute, but we want to wish you the best and know that you will not be forgotten. Melissa said that I should say a few words, and it's dangerous to tell the pastor that he could say a few words. So I got 85 pages here to, to, to still down to two. It is with humble heart that, that, that I stand behind this podium today. I wish we were inside. I wish it was different, but this is, this, is, this, this is the way it is right now. Our family appreciates the kind words shared this morning. Eight years ago, we came up from Woodburn United Methodist Church. We only served there one year. Unsure of the years ahead, we did not want to move here. <laughs> we were we were happy there. We it was it was it was it was good. We just got there, and and then and then the cabinet says it's you know there's an opening in Oregon City. Go on up. Well, my parents they were with us that first week. They helped us move, although my father was having health issues at the time. My first meeting, the first very first day, I met with with a Ted and with uh, Jim Schaefer, chair of. Uh, uh, church council at the time and they shared that this church had struggled so much that we were one month out from foreclosure <laughs> we had no money in the bank despite the the reports that that we might have had at the time that said we did and we had a balloon payment of six hundred and fifty thousand at the uh, at the end of the month and we just didn't have it god bless kitsy for all her work and making making sure the bank stayed off us and and figure that out on my very first Sunday here, there was a funeral, a part of the church service. Uh, Mrs. Sanders? Francis. Francis. And uh, I, I was out here greeting, and, and the ambulance came because Phil Snyder fell on the, on the stoop right here. 
And that, that afternoon, I went out to lunch with my folks, and uh, my dad had to run to the hospital, and then we found out that afternoon that he had stage four lung cancer. It was not a good first couple days. That's, that night, I went to go see him at the hospital, and he shared a room with Phil Snyder, so I was able to say, <laughs> say hi to him at the same time. I didn't know what to expect from all of you or what, what our family was going to do to hear. And despite all of the troubles and the tough times that this church had faced, we were met with open arms and just gracious hospitality. Look at what you have done in these past eight years. We've had many a baptisms, new life coming in. They're, they're all special, but I remember a, a one gal who asked for immersion baptism all the way under the water in October. <laughs> And uh, Sandy Marginson opened up her pool for the ceremony. Freezing bodies, warm hearts. Or, the, or one night we had a special baptismal service. We had nine people baptized, uh, two, two whole families. We've had 104 weddings since I've been here. A few of which were even in our sanctuary. Thank you for letting me be a part of your special day for the, uh, a couple of you. Uh, anyway, I won't go into that. We've said goodbye to a few of our saints. In Oregon City, we've done 48 funerals, many of whom were here in our first years. And we're gonna carry these saints in our hearts and memories. Their story is a part of what makes OCUMC special. Did you know, I think you've been told today, that we became a reconciling congregation? What's that, I hear you ask? What's that? That's the last time you're ever gonna get that, I bet you. <laughs> It means that love others and value everyone. It, they're just not words, but it's love and action where all means all. Where challenges and opportunities that we might have ahead for inclusion and acceptance. I know that this church is up to the task. Do you know that this church supports children and youth? Krista and Laura, they were running it when I got here. Leslie handed, uh, got it uh, after that, handled the impossible job of Christian education. The, the Malins, they wrangled the youth. 100 plus at VBS many years, night in Bethlehem, kids night out, mission trips, youth groups. Our nursery staffed with uh, loving folk like, like, like Heather and Carrie and, and, and Donna. I know my own children have been blessed over these years to have been a part of the children and youth program. If you have ever helped with the children and youth program, uh, let's go Big Fat Greek Wedding. Can you give me an opa? Opa! A couple of you. Do you know that we remodeled the sanctuary? Well, the hanging sheets in, uh, to the dark corners of storage. You built a sanctuary in stage that looks like a sanctuary. Thanks to everyone who put in the hours to make that happen. You got Ron Fells and the Fourier's to the worship design team, the greater congregation. The tech booth got an upgrade. All for the worship of God. If you've ever helped and worshiped, read scripture at the camera, sang along. Can you give an opa? Opa. All right. We have a preschool. Do you know we have a preschool? Uh, before COVID, they, 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 added, uh, they added a class uh, as they met the growing need here in our growing city. Beth and Danielle and Carl and Krista, they've been with us uh, you know, for a lot longer than I have. Thanks to them and their board. If you've ever been to one of their programs or helped in the preschool or had kids go through, give me an opa. We have great leaders at this church. Thank you to all who have served in many different capacities in the leadership here at OCUMC. Uh, in eight years, I've had four council chairs. Uh, Jim, Jane, Jay, Sandra. I needed another J one, but Sandra volunteered. Uh, Mary in finance, Kitsy in as, as treasurer. Ted and Rin, lay leaders. We've had great reps to annual conference with, with Sheila and Don and, and Marion and, and, and John. If you've ever served on a committee or a team at this church, give an opa. Opa. You have 10 seconds. Tell the person next to you what team or committee have you been on or which one are you going to volunteer for next year? <laughs> Did you know that this church likes food? We feed a lot of people through hope. Thank you to Sharon and her team. We can't wait to have Wednesday night dinners again. Carol, Carol's here today. And Kat cooked many a year. Then volunteers like Kathy or the Mission Possible team and many others. If, uh, and uh, uh, Sunday morning, the, the coffee cart with, with, with Dick and Ron. If, 
if, if you've ever cooked a, a, a meal here or have eaten here, uh, coffee on Sundays or helped with hope, get me an opa. opa. Did you know that we care about people here at OCUMC? From the Guatemalan group to our studies to, to opening up our doors to outside groups to the quilters and line dancers and, and, and yoga, oh my. Uh, blood group drives that use our kitchen, uh, Willamette Falls Symphony. Our men's group that gets together, the ladies group that gets together even more <laughs> with their retreats and activities. Thank you, Susan and team. We have a group called Mission Possible. I have no idea how it started. It wasn't me or church council, just a group that got together and said, let's do the impossible. And they went, they went on to do great things. I've had the question, Pastor Mike, are they an official committee of this church? I don't know, but don't stop them. <laughs> I know the danger of mentioning names in these kinds of speeches because I'm going to leave people out, but, but we thank you from, from our band and worship to, to, to Ron in the garden, to Jody at the, on the prayer circle, to everyone in between. If you've ever volunteered here, can I hear an opa? opa? Did you know that we just burned the mortgage? We, yay! We bless the work and the sacrifice you did to make that happen. So our offering dollars can go to help people in need and support our ministries. Thank you to our mortgage holder. I'm excited that the next pastor will not have a burden of debt. If you helped get the Wallers to Oregon City, give me an opa. opa. Did you know that we're a part of the United Methodist Church? And we take a portion of our offering and we support the mission and ministry of, Ge of the general global church. We call those apportionments. When I got here, we took our apportionment payment down to zero. We just couldn't do it. Some may remember that a few of our previous pastor's salaries were paid by the conference so we could squeak by. But over the years, we increased our payout bit by bit, percentage point by percentage point. And this year, this year, despite COVID, we've paid 100% of our apportionments for the first time since 1995. Can I get an amen? Amen. And if you're going to pay them next year, can I get an opa? Opa. Yeah, we'll see what we are. But that's the whole thing. <laughs> do you remember? I promise this is almost. Do you, do you know that we had our 175th anniversary at this church? Remember that? Anyone remember the party? We had the party. Many of our former pastors and, our, and spouses and members came back. We're going to celebrate 200 years and, and 19 years from now. God willing, uh, we hope to be invited back to help you celebrate. If you hope to celebrate with us in 19 years, can I get an opa? opa? Did you know that we have an awesome staff here at OCUMC? Heather and Carrie in the nursery, Donna back in the day. Kat has been the longest custodian that I've, that I've had since we've been here. Before her was Chelsea, Jacob, uh, Diane, uh, Leslie at the helm of Christian Ed, although she's recently stepped down. Turn to your neighbor and can you ask, have you thought about applying for that job? <laughs> Thank you, Rick, for the music today. Rick is celebrating his 33rd year at OCUMC. That was a Rick original, that first song, right? That was a Rick Wilson original? Nope. All right, I won't give you credit for it then. All right. But Donnie, oh, awesome. Thank you, Rick, and the music team for dedication and, and uh, to the musical program. Krista in the office, the one who helps keep the rest of us on, on task and gelled together. She not only keeps the office running, but helps put programs together. It keeps me in the loop with what's really going on and even holds ladders. God bless that line in her job description and other duties as assigned. <laughs> if you want to say thank you to our staff, give them a round of applause. And finally, did you know that I couldn't do anything here without the support of my family? My children, Christian, Gabriel, Samantha, who have learned great spiritual truths from all of you, how to serve, how to love, how to volunteer, and life skills like how to stack chairs. <laughs> my wife, Stephanie, who sang in the choir, rang bells, song leader, cook, volunteer, who did not want a key to the place or any official role, but I could not have done anything without her, and we would not have come to Oregon without her prompting. Thank you to my family. I love you. I know this party says a lot for our family, so I just, if you want to say something to my family, how about another round of applause for them? Thank you to Melissa, staff, parish team, and friends who put on this shindig. 
I still have two, two to three weeks left. I'm not. This is not the last time you'll see me, uh, or us. We're 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 gonna we're gonna go to live worship next Sunday. Can I get an amen? Sign up on our website or call uh, call Krista at the office. Uh, she'll get you in. We can fit 40 people on a Sunday. But know that we leave you with heavy hearts, full spirits, bountiful blessings, and joyous memories. Uh, we didn't want to we didn't want to move here. But now we don't want to leave. This church is wonderful because of who you are and what you continue to be. I may be the pastor, but you did all the work. And may God continue to bless this congregation in the years ahead. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. And the family of God said. Well, so let's let's end with now. One of the regulations is if you are masked outside, you can sing. So sing along with Rick and Slim. Some trails are happy. The clouds when we're together just sing a song and bring the sunny weather and trails to you and you and you and you and you till we meet again Brook with laughter spills and playfully runs down the hills where the great white owl blinks wide at the light, the sight of the Idaho moon, where the eagle soars and the sky serene, above lush valleys cool and green, where the white tailed deer come out at night by the light of the Idaho moon. Down a trail through a vale I'm hurrying to where the mountains kiss the sky. At the top I'll stop my worrying And throw my cares to the Idaho moon on high Then it's here I'll stay till my time runs out Till it calls me home and leads me out Of the land that'll see my soul in flight By the light of the Idaho moon Oh, they go to oh, 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 o